this video is looking at order of operations. Our outcomes are to evaluate multiple operations and our criteria for success are that we can are that we are able to evaluate multiple operations by using the order of operations rules. Some key ideas that we want to take into account and that is the order of operations themselves and that is firstly that we evaluate brackets that could be called parentheses as well. Um, brackets of course can be shown in a few different ways as noted at the bottom often we'll see them as rounded brackets but you can also use square brackets. We do try to avoid the curly braces because they're actually used to represent something at a later time. So usually the round brackets, but we can also use square brackets. We then evaluate multiplication followed by division. After that, we evaluate addition followed by subtraction. And we do that from left to right at all times. Now you may be familiar with something called BODMAS, B-O-D-M-A-S, right? So the B stands for brackets, the O stands for ordinals or um, powers is another way to look at it and we'll talk about that at a later stage. We've got division, multiplication, addition and subtraction. Just because the D comes before the M, division before the multiplication doesn't mean you have to do it exactly in that order because we basically think about these being the most important followed by these. The D and the M are basically equivalent to each other, so whichever one is first from left to right is what you'll do first of those, and the same with addition and subtraction. They're kind of considered to be equivalent, and whichever one came first from left to right is the one that you'll do. Uh, we also know that brackets can be inside each other, as indicated in this point here. So you might have a set of brackets, and then inside you might have a second set, and you'd start with what was inside the the most inner brackets first. Sometimes to make it clearer, people might do one set of brackets and then the next set inside, they might use the second set of brackets like that. Again, it doesn't matter which way you do it, you'd still work out the most inner brackets first. So let's use order of operations to answer these following questions. Five plus 10 divided by two. So we think about first, are there any brackets? No, there's not. Are there any multiplication or division? Yes, there is. So if we look from left to right, our first operation is an addition. So that's not what we're doing yet. Our second actual operation is a division, but that is more important than the addition. So we're going to start by doing that division. And what I like to always see is all your steps of working out doing one operation at a time. So I'm going to write this question out. And I'm writing it originally the way it is because I'm assuming that I'm writing this in my workbook, not directly under the question on the screen. So I'm going to start with that. Then I'm going to say equals 5 plus, and I'm going to do this division. So 10 divided by 2 leaves 5. So this is my new equation. And I can say equals at the start because this equation here, 5 plus 5, is the same mathematically as 5 plus 10 divided by 2. They're not the same numbers, but mathematically they are the same, so I'm allowed to use the equal sign. And of course, now I've just got one operation, which is an addition, so my last step would be to have my final answer being 10. Let's have a look at B, which is obviously a bit more complex. So again, I'm gonna write it out because I'm pretending I'm doing this in my workbook. So it's 18 minus two times bracket, four plus six bracket divided by five. The very first thing I need to do is any brackets, and I can see I've got one set of brackets there. So my next line, when I rewrite it out, is going to be 18 still, minus 2 times, I haven't done anything with that yet. I'm now going to do this 4 plus 6. So 4 plus 6 is 10, so I'm going to put that there, and then I've still got this divide by 5 afterwards. So now I again, go back to this equation. So what is the order of operations? So do I have any more brackets? No, I don't. Do I have any uh, division or multiplication? Yes, I do. I've got a multiplication here, 2 times 10, and I've already got, also got a division. Now remember, multiplication and division are basically equivalent to each other as far as importance. So we decide which one we do first by deciding which one is the first one left to right. So going left to right, the first one I hit is this multiplication, 2 times 10. 
So I'm going to solve that part next. So now I'm going to have equals, still 18, still minus. 2 times 10 is 20. And I've still got the divide by 5 here. So again, look at the equation. Do I have any brackets? No. Do I have any multiplication or division? Yes, I do. I've got a division here. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to be equal to 18 minus, let's do the division, 20 divided by 5 is 4. There we go. And again, I'm down to one operation, which is easy to do. 18 minus 4 is, of course, 14. And so again, all of these, each one of these lines is equal to any of the other lines mathematically. The number 14 here is equal to this whole string of numbers and symbols up the top because mathematically they are the same. Let's have a look at another one. So here we have an example of a question we might see in math space, the style of question here on the left. And we're going to have a space here on our right where we will show what we'll do in our workbook. So this is probably one of the more complex types of questions you might get other than a worded problem uh, where there's lots of brackets and lots of operations. So let's have a look at it. So again, I'm pretending I don't have the question right there. I'm going to write it out in my workbook first. The 45 minus bracket 31 plus another bracket 40 divided by 5 and close off the two brackets. So what do I start with? Well, I've got brackets and I've got two brackets inside each other. So I'm going to start with this inner bracket, this 40 divided by 5. So let's write it out again one step at a time. Oh, sorry about that. 45 minus, we've still got this bracket plus, then we're going to solve this bracket. 40 divided by 5, of course, is 8. And then we're closing off the bracket. We've closed off this set of brackets, we've only got one at the end. So here we have still one set of brackets. So we'll do the next line equals 45 minus 31 plus 8 becomes 39. Okay. And then, of course, we've got a single uh, operation left here. So 45 minus 39 equals 6. So even though that looked fairly complicated with all those brackets, it's actually very straightforward if we take it step by step. Solve the brackets first. And in this case, there's two sets. So we do the innermost bracket first, get the answer. Then we solve that next bracket, get the answer. And, of course, that was simply a, a subtraction at the end. So the word wasn't actually that many steps, even though the equation might have looked a bit scary at the start. Here is a word question, the sort of thing you'd see again in um, the math space. So let's have a look. Find the difference between 76 and 43, triple this result, and finally subtract the quotient of 35 and 7. So again, the first thing here is to work out what the actual equation is. So let's take it step by step from the left as we read it through. Find the difference between 76 and 43. Difference, of course, means subtraction. So the difference between those two is 76 minus 43. All right, so that's solving this part of the problem so far. Triple this result. So take the result that we found here and triple it. So tripling something means to multiply it by 3. So let's put this in brackets now because we have to work that out first. All right, and then we are multiplying by 3. So I'm going to put the 3 times at the front, just uh, for neatness. So that is tripling this result. And then finally, subtract, so we've got a subtraction happening here, the quotient of 35 and 7. Quotient, if you're not remembering, means the division or the answer from a division. So 35 and 7, so we want to take away the answer of 35 divided by 7. And I'll put that in brackets as well. Now I don't technically have to put the brackets around this 35 divided by 7 because a division would be more important than a subtraction, um, but it does help for clarity sometimes to put extra brackets in. They don't hurt. So let's start to solve this. We've got three times. Let's work out the first bracket left to right. So even though I've got a second bracket over here, Let's work it out in order left to right. So 76 minus 43 is going to be 33. And then we've got a minus. We've still got this here, bracket 35 divided by 7. We do have a multiplication, but we've also got brackets, and brackets are more important. So let's solve that now. 
So we've got equals 3 times 33 minus, let's solve this, 35 divided by 7 is 5. Sorry, my pen stopped working there for a moment. Um, and that solved that bracket. Now let's look at what we've got. We've got 3 times 33, okay? So that's the multiplication, that's bod mass, brackets, no, no brackets. Multiplication, yes, that's more important than division. So we've got equals, 3 times 33, of course, is 99. And we've got our minus 5. And of course, we've got one final operation being the minus. So 99 minus 5, of course, is 94. So our final answer is 94. So again, there weren't too many steps. There were only five steps in this whole process, but possibly the most difficult, and in some ways the most important, was deciding what the original equation was. Reading through the question carefully and being able to work out what equation to write so that you can then solve it. Looking for those words like difference and result and quotient and subtract, those key words that are going to help us to know how we put this together. And that is a set of examples for you to have a look back over and you can go through and do your classwork as well.